Good morning. Uh, Tad here at Bethlehem Community Church, Washougal. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, anxiety this morning. Uh, a lot going on around us that uh, could produce a bit of that in our lives. The Apostle Paul was one who no doubt uh, was in a situation many times that uh, could have caused a lot of anxiety. He had a lot of things piling up on his plate. Uh, hard times, heavy times, mean, vindictive people, uh, life-threatening things. He faced sad times, discouraging times, uh, things that very legitimately could uh, cause anyone fear and anxiety. Well, he summed it up with the word anxiety in Philippians chapter 2, verse 28. In the NIV, there he speaks about having less anxiety about a friend, Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus' medical condition, near unto death. But um, then just a couple chapters later, he gives a command, don't be anxious about anything. Well, what's up? Does Paul give this command apart from any personal connection to the matter of anxiety? Is there nothing in his life that could cause a person to relate to the subject? Well, several things in his letter to the Philippians would seem to suggest otherwise. So what's going on? Is he the great apostle Paul above it all? Well, I don't think so. In verse 13 and 17 of chapter 1, he tells us that he's in chains for the gospel for Christ. Twice he mentions that. Then there's his concern and love for others as he looks over the church at uh, Philippi. And there he mentions they're going through the same struggle that he had, in verse 29 through 30. And that word struggle, we get our English word from the Greek word, our word agony. And here it's agony of the soul, and it's the same agony that Christ suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane. He speaks in chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, of the dogs, the evil men, who were going around perverting the gospel. And that was a serious concern. And here he calls them out. Paul had a lot going on in his life. He said many were living as enemies of the cross of Christ in chapter 3, verse 18. And that brought tears to his eyes. And seeing two dear women, co-workers in the gospel, uh, torn apart by division, no longer able to serve in the cause of the gospel. That brought sadness and pain. We'll speak of them later. And then back to chapter 2, verse 25 to 30, he mentions a close friend, Epaphroditus, sick almost to death, causing him anxiety. He uses that term, great concern and grief. But one big key in dealing with the subject of anxiety, or as far as that goes, or fear, or worry, or doubt, is having good, solid Christian friends. Timothy and Epaphroditus mentioned in chapter 2, verse 19 through 30, uh, serve as great examples of friends who can help. Do we struggle sometimes with stress and anxiety? No doubt. The question is, do we have someone like Timothy? Someone dependable, verse 20. And by the way, I'd say, get your Bibles and follow along. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 through 30. In verse 20, Paul said, I have no one like him. Timothy was literally a soulmate, like soul is what the term means there, like him. He took a genuine interest in the Philippians' welfare, verse 20. Timothy had proved himself, verse 22. He was a trustworthy friend. He was like a son to Paul, very close, in a working relationship also, in verse 22. Well, someone else who can help bringing in outside help to get us through the stress of our life. It was a person like Epaphroditus, of whom Paul wrote in verse 25 that he was a brother, a fellow worker, and a soldier to Paul. Epaphroditus was willing to serve as a messenger on a very dangerous journey to bring Paul aid in verse 25. He was someone with a servant's heart who put others first. Do we have someone who who puts us in our time of need above their own. Well, Epaphroditus was one to be joyfully welcomed and honored, verse 29. Someone that you just can't say enough good about. Do we have a Timothy? Do we have an Epaphroditus in our lives to help us in hard times? Are there other things that Paul suggests there in the book of Philippians that can help us? Or, again, does Paul just issue that command, don't be anxious about anything? and leave us hanging. Are the things that we see in his life here in Philippians 
that can help us toward the goal of a more anxious free life? Well, the immediate answer to anxiety he gives us in verse 6 of chapter 4, we are told, don't be anxious about anything, but, but pray about it. Be thankful and trust God. Be thankful for the things that cause anxiety and stress and worry. Yes, because it's these anxious times, these stressful times that God wants to use to bring us closer to himself. And of that, Paul wrote elsewhere, he says, when I am weak, then I am strong because he was strengthened by the spirit of God. So what's the cure for anxiety on a practical level? How can we put feet to our prayers and our quest to lessen our anxiety, to lower the blood pressure? What were some possible causes for anxiety for Paul and, and what help can we discover as how he worked through these things? Well, the causes we mentioned twice, locked up for Christ in chains, verse 13 and 17 of chapter one. Do we need help in dealing with anxiety? How did Paul deal with this? Well, look for the good in the midst of the bad. In chapter one, verse 15 through 19, there he said, it's true, some preach Christ out of envy and strife, but others of goodwill. The important thing is, he continued, that Christ is preached, and in that I rejoice, yea, and I will rejoice. Look for the good in the midst of the bad. Allow others to join in and help. Verse four of chapter one, Paul speaks of the Philippians partnering with him in the gospel. And in verse 19, he speaks of their prayers and the help given as a result of their prayers. If we don't share what's going on deep inside, others will not know how they can enter in and partner with us during this time. In dealing with anxieties, don't try to second guess God. In times of stress and suffering, be it emotional or mental, physical, spiritual, uh, realize it's a growth process. In verse 29 of chapter 1, we're told it has been granted to us as a gracious gift of God, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And then in chapter 4, verse 2, we find this principle of being willing to deal with the problem head on. I mentioned earlier, Yodi and Syntyche, that they need to agree with each other in the Lord. And here we need to recognize the need to call out for help. Paul there said, I, I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who contended at my side, who labored with me in the gospel. Skipping over a problem or an issue will only delay it and worsen the problem. There's times we need to recognize that we must call out for others to help us. And then as Paul would say, finally, brethren. And here I would say, finally, brethren, let's pray. And dear Father, as Paul wrote, help us not to be anxious about anything. But Lord, in, in everything, by prayer and with our petitions to you, help us to be thankful. Help us to present our request to you. And God, we pray that your peace, which goes beyond all understanding, may that guard our hearts, may that guard our minds. We pray it in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen.